After watching this video, you should be able to describe the basics of the cardiac cycle, the phases, the order, and correlations with ventricular volume, pressure, and valvular events. But first, let's take a look at the anatomy. So we have the atrium. And recall that there's a right atrium and a left atrium. And the atrium deliver blood to the ventricles. They fill the ventricles. So we got to put in ventricle here in this lavender color. And the right atrium fills the right ventricle. And the left atrium fills the left ventricle. Now the ventricles eject blood into the great arteries. So we need to put that in. So right great artery here in this nice strawberry color. And the right ventricle ejects blood into the pulmonary artery. So we'll write that in. And the left ventricle ejects blood into the aorta. All right, so now we have all the important parts on the right and the left side. And now let's put a box around everything in yellow to contain everything schematically. We'll leave a little gap to indicate blood's going to be coming out of the pulmonary artery into the lungs and aorta into systemic circulation and a gap for blood coming into the atrium from the vena cava or pulmonary mm -hmm. veins. We'll also separate the atrium from the ventricles, the ventricles from the great arteries, okay? And we'll leave a little gap for our heart valves, okay? And we'll start off putting in our valves that separate the atrium from the ventricle. Um, here, these are called atrioventricular valves. It's easy to remember because they separate the atrium and the ventricle. And on the right and left sides, there's different names separating the right atrium from the right ventricle. We have the tricuspid valve because it has three leaflets and the mitral valve or bicuspid valve, which has two leaflets. Okay. Now let's put in the valves that separate the ventricles from the great arteries. Put those in here. And these are called semilunar valves, based on how they look. And on the right side, separating the right ventricle from the pulmonary artery, we have the pulmonic valve. And on the left side, separating the left ventricle from the aorta, we have the aortic valve. All right. Now, it's important to remember that the way these valves work is they allow flow of blood in one direction. So we'll write over here on the left, blood flow. And we'll have it going down from atria to ventricle and ventricle out to great artery. So that's the normal direction of blood flow. Okay, and that's, that's what normally should happen. Now we'll take away the blood flow and just want to point out that the focus of the cardiac cycle, which is going to be the rest of this video, is with respect to the ventricle contractions and relaxations that occur uh, on, a, on, a, on a cyclic basis. And these contractions and relaxations of the ventricles are dictated by electrical events and the coupling of the electrical and mechanical events called excitation contraction coupling. And that's what's going to be causing the ventricles to contract and relax and cause changes in pressure that are going to be very important. Now let's take away that and first talk about valves and how they open and close. Okay, so let's start with our AV valves. And the two states of the, of the valves are either going to be in the open state or the closed state. Okay, so we'll write that in. And since the AV valves separate the atrium and ventricle, we need to consider the pressure difference between those two locations. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to write in pressure in the atrium. Okay, and then we need to have uh, the pressure in the ventricle. 
So we can go and write that in. And we need to know, well, what conditions causes the valve to open? Okay, so for open AV valve, the pressure in the atrium is going to be greater than the pressure in the ventricle. And that's what opens the valve. And that makes sense because that's going to allow flow. Remember, flow goes from a high pressure to a low pressure. And remember, the direction of flow is from atria to ventricle. So we're going to have filling of blood. Now, for the closure of the valves, we can do the same thing. We can put in, again, our two pressures, pressure in the atria and pressure in the ventricle. And in this case, when the pressure in the atria is less than the pressure in the ventricle, the valve is going to be closed. And then we're going to have a no-flow state. We were talking uh, uh, earlier that flow is one direction. This is going to allow for that. Okay. So now let's take a look at the other set of valves, the semilunar valves, and we'll do the same kind of thought process. We're going to write open state and closed state. And in this case, the comparison of pressures is going to be between the ventricles and the great arteries. So we can write in pressure in the ventricle, okay? And then we can also write in pressure in the great artery over here. So we'll write that in as our two pressures that we're going to be comparing. So now that we have those two uh, in place, what's going to open the semilunar valves is going to be when the pressure in the ventricle is greater than the pressure in the great artery. And that makes sense because that's going to allow flow. Again, remember, flow goes from high pressure to low pressure. And we said that blood leaves the ventricle into the great artery. That's the proper direction. Now, for close, we have the pressure in the ventricle compared to the pressure in the great artery again. Okay. And in this case, we're going to have a reversal when the pressure in the ventricle is less than the pressure in the great artery. Now we have a no flow condition. Again, that allows for our unidirectional flow that we were talking about earlier. And that's important. Now, the focus, again, is on the ventricles contracting and relaxing for the cardiac cycle, dictated by electrical events. And now we're going to need to take a closer look at what is going on with the actual phases. So we have systole and diastole as our two major cardiac cycle phases. And each of these phases has two parts. The systole phase is comprised of the isovolumetric contraction phase. Okay. And we can abbreviate that IVC. And then there is the ejection phase where blood is leaving the ventricle into the great arteries. Now, for the diastole phase, that has two parts as well. Isovolumetric relaxation is the first part of diastole. And that's abbreviated IVR. And the second part is filling of the ventricle from the atria. Now, it turns out that the filling phase has actually three parts. There's an early rapid filling phase where most of the filling occurs, something like 70-80% of the blood. There's a slow phase of filling or di diastasis where not very much blood comes in, and then there's a late rapid filling phase where the, the remainder 20% gets into the ventricle from atrial contraction. Sometimes that's uh, referred to as atrial systole. Now, it's important to know the order, and here's the order. We always go in this order. IVC, ejection, IVR, filling. IVC, ejection, IVR, filling. Always that order. We never skip. Now, let's take a look at correlating these phases to ventricle or ventricular volume. Okay. The ventricular volume during I IVC is no change from the name. The ejection phase, it's going to decrease because ventricle volume is going down. Isovolumetric relaxation is no change. 
and the filling phase, well, blood's going up in the ventricle. And that makes sense. During the isovolumetric phases, no blood's coming in or leaving. And during the ejection and filling phases, blood is moving. Either the ventricle's ejecting blood in the great arteries or it's receiving blood from the atria and filling. Now let's put in the next thing, which is going to be ventricular pressure. Okay, we want to know what's going on with that. And we can get some of this information from the name. So IVC, the ventricle is going to be electrically excited. It's going to begin its contraction. The pressure is going to rise. That pressure is going to continue to go up. Uh, initially, continue into the ejection phase. The blood's going to leave the ventricle. And then it's actually going to start to relax. There's going to be electrical inhibition. Um, and the ventricle is going to begin it to, to relax in the latter part of ejection. And that's going to continue in the isovolumetric relaxation phase and then that's going to continue in the very beginning part of filling it's going to actually contribute to the early rapid filling phase and then as the blood fills the ventricle the pressure is going to slowly rise okay so it's important to know how these pressures are going to be changing now finally the valvular events we can figure out based on what's going on with pressure differences as we discussed earlier so let's put in our two major classes of valves, the AV valves, okay? And we are uh, going to put in the semilunar valves as well. Okay, and we want to know um, what's going on during these phases. Are they open or are they closed? Well, during the IVC phase, if there's no blood coming in or leaving, well, then both sets of valves are closed. And that's because of the pressure differences between the ventricle and atria and ventricle and great arteries. Okay, so the conditions are such that the both sets of valves are closed. Now, during ejection, blood's leaving. So as the ventricle pressure rises, the semilunar valve opens to allow ejection of blood, but the ventricle pressure is greater than the atrial pressure and the AV valve is closed. Okay, we have IVR, which is the same idea as IVC. Both sets of valves are going to be closed. There's no blood filling the ventricle and there's no blood leaving the ventricle, there's, there's no ejection, the ventricle is a closed chamber. Now as the ventricle pressure is falling and relaxing, um, the pressure falls enough to um, drop below atrial pressure opening the AV valves, but the semilunar valves are still closed and we have blood coming into the ventricle and filling the ventricle. And so you can see that do only during the ejection phase we have flow right flows leaving the ventricle and during filling we have flow from the atria into the ventricle and again isovolumetric phases there's no flow and that's important so you really want to be able to correlate all this stuff with the phases okay now let's take a look at the cardiac cycle here we go again uh, with this uh, figure we were looking at earlier and now let's visually look at what's going on with the cardiac cycle. Okay, so what we're going to start off with is we're going to start off with the ventricle, here we go, relaxing. You see the arrows pointing out, means it's relaxing, and we can see the AV valve is open, and look, blood's coming in. So this is going to be the filling phase. Okay, it's real easy to see that. Now, after filling, remember the ventricle gets electrically excited. Okay. And actually what we have here is um, first we'll actually put in that the volume's increased. Okay. But now the, the ventricle is going to get electrically excited. All right. So we'll erase the arrows going out. And now the ventricle pressure is going to rise. It's going to exceed the atrial pressure. Okay, and now we're going to close the AV valve right here. Okay, and now this phase is ventricles contracting. Both sets of valves are closed. No blood's coming in, no blood's leaving. So this is going to be the isovolumetric contraction phase, which is the first part of systole. Okay, now... As the ventricle is contracting, eventually the pressure is going to exceed the great artery pressure, and that's going to be the conditions to open the semilunar valve, and now blood's going to leave. 
go from a high pressure to a low pressure. And that is going to be the, our, our ejection phase. Okay, So we can write that in. Now, the latter part of ejection, remember the ventricle starts to relax. Okay, So we can put in that. We have the little arrows sticking outward to indicate the ventricle is relaxing. Okay, and once the pressure drops below the great artery pressure, we're going to now close the semilunar valve, and we can see that we have to erase the level of blood. We're now going to have a low level of blood, right? It's going to be at a minimal volume, and we are going to now have the valve closed. And look again, we have a closed chamber, and the ventricle is relaxing. So that's iso volumetric relaxation. Okay, so let's write that in, right? IVR, which is our first part of diastole. Okay, so now the ventricle is relaxing, and when the pressure drops below the atrial pressure, the valve is going to open, the AV valve is going to open, and now blood's going to come in. We're going to fill. Okay, so now we're at the filling phase, and now we've gone around our cardiac cycle. You can see that's the sequence of events. Okay? And that's sort of where we started with. So um, now we can go back to our summary, and now you should be able to list the order of the cardiac cycle phases and correlate them with ventricle volume, pressure, and valvular events. And that concludes this lecture on cardiac cycle basics.